You know, I had a friend who was struggling with yeast infections back to back to back to back to back. Her partner and her literally could not have a happy, successful sex life until I gave her my favorite pussy power pill, the vitamins, and it eliminated all of her yeast trouble. Let me tell you, it's good for BV, it's good for wetness, it's good for UTIs. It's a fucking magical pill for your pussy. It really is. I was reading the reviews on their website. Damn, V Vitamins is literally saving lives every day with this amazing 600 milligrams of blessed boric acid. It's woman owned, so you know she knows what the fuck she's doing over there. It's black owned. And right now, V Vitamins is offering our listeners 10% off when you use code GMBC10 at vaginalvitamins.com. That's right. Go to vaginalvitamins.com and use promo code GMBC10 for 10% off. Or to make it easy, just click the link in this week's episode description. Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. Happy Wednesday, my love. Happy Wednesday, wife. How are you feeling? I'm great. How are you? I am um, I'm good. I'm doing good. You know, mom life, juggling, being a superstar and a mom, trying to get people to pick up my kid from school so I can interview the biggest rock star of them all. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. But uh, all's well. How are you? I'm great, you guys. If you are not following us on YouTube, you should specifically now. This is the time because bitches have leveled up today, okay? Actually, I, I did a wrong thing and I started to look at our um, our comments on YouTube last night. Why would you do that? I don't know. I was just curious. <laughs> um, I was like refraining from talking shit to you, people. This is what you do in the late night. I know. I'm like, let me like see Like the other night you were on Lipstick Alley. Like why? Don't tell me when I did that. It's a <laughs> secret. Um, anyway, someone requested that we start showing our outfits. They said they were fashion nistas and we never show our outfits. So I just wanted to say for whoever wrote that comment. <laughs> did you get dressed specifically for this? You didn't even no, tell I, me. I get dressed every day. What are you talking about? Okay, I'd like to think that's for me. Yes. We have our titties out. And sometimes me and Erica, most of the time we always coordinate because we're spiritual witches, wives. No. Oh, my God. I'm going to. Okay. Let's. When should we introduce our guest? I was going to tell about our witchy incident over the weekend. It's really not that intense, but I don't know what she's talking about. We were sitting in the somewhere, and I had a specific thought about a particular random person that we both know, but it's not a very close person. It's someone who lives in fucking Costa Rica. Mm. We do not talk to him often, and I was like thinking of him. And she turns and looks at me and goes, "Have you talked to Gilly?" And I said, "Stop." right now <laughs> get the fuck out of my head i do not appreciate it and she's like what are you talking about i was like bitch i was literally thinking about this nigga right this very instant and you said this to me i uh, it scared me really bad i mean not scared me like i knew we we're connected and we're witches but that shit i was like this is this is on a different level of connection i was like are, are we talking without talking are we that close that we're talking without moving our mouth yeah yeah so it's it's official we're witches <laughs> anyway we have a, a very special guest here today um, who's blessed us with this poppin' ass studio setting because he's Poppington, <laughs> the rock star of all, the OG, the original, best to ever do it, <laughs> second time on our show, the dad, the entrepreneur, the king, the mogul, the mogul, Damon, motherfucking Dash. I like that one. I, I was like expecting that. an applause out there. That was like... <laughs> <laughs> we can add that later. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Better now. How are you? I miss you, friend. Last time I saw you uh, was randomly in the backstages of Coachella. Yeah, yeah. You were having a ball. I was, uh, you know, he was escorting his his daughters around like a good dad. Yeah, the good rock star dad that he is. Literally, like his daughters, like we're leaving, dad. He's like, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, they were like bossing his ass all over, all over around. Erica told me she's like, yeah, I saw Damon. It was so cute. She was he was here with his daughter and his daughter's. Son, they're making out. He was acting like daughter's was, son. I mean, daughter's boyfriend, not daughter's son. They daughter's was, boyfriend. They wasn't making out. <laughs> they were kissing. They were getting real. I didn't see close. that. Well, I don't, it was right in front of your face. I wasn't. Erica looking. saw it because she was like, "Damon was acting so cool," and they were just making out. I was like, no, "I didn't see that." I guess that's what his rock star dad's all about. You just act cool. Well, you know, Ava. Well, I have a thing with my daughters. Is 
I'm actually like a straight slave for them. <laughs> and the reason why is because if they get with a guy, the guy has to treat them at least as good as me or as me, or if not better. And, you know, she has someone that really respects her and that actually uh, does the right thing by her. So, you know, they're in a relationship. You know what I mean? It's not like a, a hookup. Even though if they're kissing, I don't want to see that. But, you know, he's doing... He, and, and I know that the reason why is because she's seen our relationship, Raquel's and I, and the way I treat her. So she caught one, a good one, you know. But so he comes to Coachella. Like my when I took my daughter, to Ava, to Coachella when she was 14 years old. So then when Tallulah turned 14, Ava leveraged that and was like, you know, Tallulah's 14, so we all got to go to Coachella. So you got to get the tickets. You got to get the house. And there was really nothing I could say to that. And I actually enjoyed it, you know. So I got that off. Uh, I don't know if Tallulah wanted to go as bad as maybe Ava, mm -hmm. but she got that off her bucket list. And did, I was did, able to take both of my kids to Coachella when they were a certain age and then together. And then, you know, Ava graduated college. That's amazing. This. Yeah, the good part about Ava is that I've taught her a lot of my ideals. She's like me as a woman. But, you know, I never have had to feel that, like, pain of a daughter that's not doing the right thing publicly, you know what I mean? Or just, you know, sort of disrespecting or growing or going through it. She never went through it like that. And I appreciate that. And I got to give a lot of those, those props to her moms as well, but she's been classy. She's kept it classy and she's kept me uh, proud. You know, like she did it. She, she graduated college and I didn't care if she went to college, but she went, but I'm proud. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She chose to go. I'm also proud that she got to go to college without debt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's where that pride comes in. But she had the discipline to do it. She's in the proper relationship. You know, she does a modeling one too. You know, you're, she's you're both your kids are beautiful. First of all, they're 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 supermodels. They're gorgeous. Yeah, my two daughters. You know, I got Boogie and Lucky, and now Baby Dusko as well. I got boys. Yes, all your kids. My Thank Dusko, you. Baby Dusko. Is we all make some beautiful kids. Y'all got some too. Baby Dusko is ill. This is the first one I was able to raise every single day. And art detect the life where I never leave him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like as soon as we're done here, I'm right back there. And I'm actually going to do an interview with my daughter that's about our TV show and Love for a Living, about our my children. And that's all amazing. That. Yeah. It's called In Love for a Living. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Rocky and I are in love for a living. I like that. I want to be in love for a living. I well, mean, I am I'm in love with you. Well, <laughs> but, well, the trick about making money is doing something that you would do for free, something you enjoy so much that you actually get paid for it and it never feels like work. So, you know, why would you create a career that doesn't include the person you want to be around the most? That means you're not going to be around her or him when you're promoting and you're out doing what you got to do. So my model, even with um, my uh, ex-wife, Rachel, I create businesses with them so that, you know, we can do it together and we never leave each other. And, uh, you know, when there's an, a dream that's made, I was there to help make it come true. Because overall, that's what your man is supposed to do. He's supposed to make your dreams come true. If your man's not making your dreams come true, he's not your man. Do you hear that? That's a fucking word. Do you hear that? No, it's been... I have I have really loved watching um, the evolution of you and Raquel. Because I've known you now for Long time. almost 10 years. I think more than that. No, I mean, it was right right before I got pregnant. That's that's when we first met. Yeah. Then we know each other like a year before that. Yeah. So like eight, eight, nine yeah, years. Like My daughter's seven. Yeah. Yeah, and. With Davida, you Davida. Yeah, she, yeah. Who's Davida? She just like defriended me. I don't know why. What happened? She's around. I know, but she never had. She doesn't check in. Or she don't be on. She don't be going nowhere. She don't be leaving her house. She's on the gram. She don't be. She's anyway, She's yeah. fighting people's rights. That's good. We all are. <laughs> you know? you know. She's but not anyway. political. She's not. She's coming. fighting for people's rights. <laughs> Um, but I know Rocky started off as your assistant and then grew into being like the wife, your wifey. And yeah, she changed my life unsuspectedly. In what ways did you think she's changed your life? Well, she became my muse and I wanted different qualities in a woman that I had prior to. So before, in a very egotistical way, I was really into dating famous women mm. and models and all that other shit. And, you know, I was really, really completely, and everyone knows this, in love with Aaliyah. And even while she was alive, the the, the relationship was painful because she was always gone. 
and I was always gone. We both had, we're professionals. And we, again, we weren't working together. But, um, you know, I forgot what I was talking about. What were we talking about? Well, just saying how, like, how, how your expectations have, what you oh, wanted what I changed, changed. Right. Yeah. So, you know, around the time I met Rocky, it was like, I just wanted a girl that was beautiful in the morning. <laughs> huh. Huh. When, when she woke up. Like, that, that was it. I was like, as long as when we wake up, she's gorgeous. You know, because that's when you spend the most time. Like, when you get into a relationship with somebody, you got to wake up with them every day and go to sleep with them. And it's not like you're out and dressed up. It's how good you look when you dress down. Mm. And she's just perfect when she's dressed down. You know what I mean? And then, you know, it was about her showing me the things that I wasn't really able to do because I became successful relatively young. So going to supermarkets and just walking around in the street and walking dogs and going to bars, just regular shit was like a big deal for me. Mm. And she enjoyed things. And because she didn't know who I was when she met me, she never had any expectation. So everything that I did is a surprise to her or do. There's no, ex everyone else that I've ever met, it's just, this is like an entitlement of everything being Big Willie, no matter what, you know, but her, her family, there's no entitlement. You know, they had no expectation. It's just, you know, everything feels like appreciated. So she's always appreciated everything that a lot of pe people don't. And then just like, you know, wanting a, knowing like wanting a girl that paints and that takes pictures and draws and, you know, those kind of cooks, you know, take, does yoga, you know, takes good care of herself. You know, when someone takes good care of themselves, by default, they got to take good care of you, you mm. know? So if you see a person, a partner, and their house is dirty, then don't expect them to clean yours. If they don't cook for themselves, you can't expect them to cook for you, mm. you know? So if somebody doesn't do something for themselves, it's rare they're going to be able to do it for someone else. That's the reason why when I work with people, they have to have a dream and I have to see them working on it because the amount of work you put into your dream it's probably exactly the amount of work that you're putting into mine. Mm. So if I see you being lackadaisical about your own, I know you're being lackadaisical about mine. Right. I mean, then, even if you are putting more into my shit than your own, how long will that last if you are not committed to yourself? There's oh. something to be said about someone more committed to the relationship than to themselves. I don't think that's healthy. Well, I think yeah. I find people that are totally okay, like will commit to other people's dreams versus their own. I know we, but we do that. We that, see that all the time. That's not the right relationship. But do, you, but do you want that person? No, of course not. But I think I see that all the time, and just in every aspect, not just relationships and in, in business I think, as well. I think the thing about a relationship of finding the perfect partner is like with Rocky things that people look at in other relationships that I've had as faults, she finds as strengths. You understand what I mean? What are some examples? She doesn't mind women around. She doesn't mind it at all. Well, and when you say women around, are they just women around in the house, in the bathing suits, in all the cuddle pockets, in the pool? Are you interacting with the women? Are you just making, are you like kissing them? Like what level of around is she accepting of? And the people weren't prior to her. The level of accepting when you guys were in the pool. <laughs> I have an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you, Dame, after that pool date. <laughs> so I know everyone hears this. If you're listening, if you're a long time listener, you know that I'm a three way kissing bitch. I be three way kissing. I don't know why it brings so much joy to my heart. It really does. But um, it's for, it's because of Dame. I know you really Dame you, did you, it. You lit the fire in her. Oh, Ever wow. since Dame, <laughs> I have been three way kissing. <laughs> Ever since <laughs> I've been on a, like a like a fucking manifesto, three-way kissing. <laughs> Come, everyone, gather around. You, you, you. Oh, four, no, we can't do that. <laughs> we did four too. Yeah, we did. Oh shit. I have, you know, I reserved the four for us. Yeah. I haven't taken that far, but I have three-way my fucking life away. I, I um, wasn't expecting you to say all that. <laughs> but I, I see what we're working with now. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, last time, <laughs> last time, Erica and I. Now, if you want to watch this birthday spanking, join Patreon past your bedtime tier. That's right. That's patreon.com backslash good moms, bad choices to see this uncensored birthday spanking. 
You're welcome. Went to the house. We all went swimming and we. Oh, wow. Why not? Damon gave us. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show did you think you were on, Dame? I know. You were never rock star moms. What the we, fuck? We're we, rock star moms. We tell it like it is. We in the pool. And then Rocky came and then we. Wait. Okay, let's. <laughs> we're good. Let's not, we don't want to tell everybody. I've been, so. Damn, Jamila. Yeah, Jamila. Let's I not. thought. Like it I, thought it, I thought it was lovely. No, 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 it was great. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to you. <laughs> Damn, I got out Dame Dash. That's crazy. Ooh, what I, you mean? Let me take your toast for that one. <laughs> okay, what was the next question? You hear that? <laughs> you hear that, guys? I've out Damon to Damon. You did. You did. I started to sweat a little. Good. Don't sweat. I'm sorry. Bring ah, it back. Bring it back. Ah. So, what are you saying? Um, do you think previously in relationships have you had you tried to fit into a box of like what's like a normal I guess monogamous relationship would look like? I think I was always tried to put be put in a box, you know. Like if you're attracted to a man because women like him, and then you get with him, you can't be mad at women still being attracted to him. And you know if he's a witty, humorous, flirtatious kind of a guy or charming. You can't expect the person to stop being charming, you know? How do you think you balance that, though? Like, how do you, I mean, obviously, I know Rocky and... I'm with Rocky every single day. You guys don't get tired of each other? Never. That's the thing. I never get tired of being around Rocky. You see, I don't be out. I got what I'm looking for. I'm not out recruiting. I'm not out recruiting, you know? And I don't disrespect our relationship by lying. So, you know, we have a very honest relationship. And um, it just so happens that she's one of the most confident people I've ever met in my life. Because it's, it's not like an issue that has to be pushed. She doesn't like dudes around me. Like, she doesn't like dudes. I don't like dudes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we have that in common. But she really does, like, she feels, you know, she knows. I guess from being around me, she knows every single thing a dude's not saying and what a dude is thinking and what a dude has the potential to do, you know? So she just like cut all of that off completely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have friends and I have a lot and I have consistent relationships with them, but they don't entail me being away from my girl, but it doesn't entail my girl being around a bunch of dudes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it works out that way. So now that I know you guys, well, you guys just had a baby. Well, not just. How old is Dusko now? A year and a half. A year and a half. Wow, time is, is flying. Um, and essentially, I mean, I guess it's almost like a, a second chance of fatherhood for you. Not that like you needed a second chance, but like we said, like this is the first child no, I needed, that you... I needed a fifth chance. That was my oh, yeah, fifth, fifth chance. <laughs> <laughs> I needed it. Sorry, a fifth. Um, and I know, I know Rocky, you know, she really, really wanted a child as well. That's and, all she wanted. Right. She didn't care about anything but having a child. And actually we went through IVF and fairly... Uh, far along in the pregnancy it went wrong and you know that didn't work out and um a year later we had a baby i mean we really had to uh was, push. It, through, was it through ivf as well yeah mm-hmm. and we're starting the process again today <gasps> yesterday she started taking the shot really? congratulations I, i'm like yo i'm 51 man if we're gonna do this we gotta do this now mm-hmm. but yeah every relationship that i've had prior to this one I've had to fight to see my children. My children have been used to hurt me, which hurts them. And my children haven't been able to have the luxury of seeing both of us at the same time and enjoying both of us at the same time and not seeing me hurt because I miss them so much. Mm -hmm. So being able to architect a world where I can be with my child every, I've been with baby Dusko every single day since he's been born. Like I've flown places and come back to New York and back and thank you. New York and back in a day, uh, Nicolette and I, just because I can't be, I can't do it. I, I I have a different option, and it's the best feeling in the world. There's nothing better than, you know, like just watching your baby grow and being able to invest time and him be able to just be with both of us or one of us and just pivot back. Like, it's crazy to to, to be able I know that I've been I've been the person that's rocked him to sleep because every day, more than anyone. It's not like we swim three times a day. We went to the doctor yesterday, and the doctor was like, he's at a four-year-old's level. Mm. 
you know, the things he's doing. And I don't think, you know, he's a super genius. I just, I think every child is a super genius if both parents can invest a certain amount of time mm-hmm. in them. And that's another thing is Rocky does that. She done made two books, coloring books. She makes his food from, you know, he's complete. It's the dream. And I always remember where I came from all the time. Not to say the hood, just where I was mentally and what was hurting me. So I know what was hurting me before. It was hurting me that I couldn't see my children. Mm -hmm. My whole life has been court and, and, and being positioned just so I could see them the moments that I can. The pain of missing them on holidays and birthdays. And Rocky stuck with me through actually every bit of that since Tallulah was born. And then I know the pain of wanting to have a baby with a woman and it not working out so quickly. Knowing that it's the perfect relationship. Like, finally, I got the woman, but we can't have the baby. And I subsequently, we went through some shit that I never, ever went through. You know, a different kind of pain. But I knew that the only reason for that darkness was because the light was going to be crazy. But as an adult, I was able to architect what I wanted the first two, three years to look like for us. And we've been living it. So I'm actually living in my dream right now. But I had to visualize it first. And she visualized it. And we fought hard for it. And that's why you marinate. It's like sometimes you got to feel some pain to marinate it when you're not in pain. Mm. And that's what's fucked up about human. It's like trial and error. I'd rather be able to learn from somebody else's pain. Mm. But I actually had to learn from my own. But I'm, I'm lucky enough to be agile. And to still be healthy, to get that other chance to do it right. Had I not been able, like, you know, Ava just graduated college. Had I not been able to experience what I've experienced now, I would have really missed out on the meaning of life. Mm. You know? For sure. I mean, I think. Like, and a lot of people don't get to go through that. <clears throat> you get that lighter back? You got to be a lighter passer backer. My bad. <laughs> Pass that fire back. Well, I think that's amazing. I think, obviously, I think as mothers and women, this is something that we, you know, we we had Joe Budden on the show, and uh, he he said that mothers are the primary parent. And I took issue with that because I felt like, no, motherfucker, this is a, this is a two-person situation. We both laid down, had this baby, and said we were going to be there. To hear what you're saying and saying that you want to be there through every step of the way and be involved. Every that doctor's is, appointment. And that's what everything. I mean. I, he, he said that that's just how it goes. And I said, no, that's a choice. That's a choice. That's a, for sure a choice. Like, men make that choice of like, yeah, you got it. Uh, you know, that's I, not for you me. You know, I got, what, what happens when you get to spend that time, you get to see how hard it is to raise a child or a baby. Because a baby needs to be watched 24-7. They're, they're always moving around. So it's hard to have time for yourself. Mm-hmm. So if Rocky didn't have the support system, I would—I don't even know. It's, it's still hard with the support system, mm-hmm. but we—you know—we we, no one's complaining. We love that kind of hard, you know. What I'm saying pause. So, <laughs> so it, it's, it's, I, I know. Again, I was having an argument with a, a debate with one of my friends that I respect a lot, and I was like, "Yo, women are God to me, man. I'm a slave for." Them. And, you know, that's what makes me a king. And that's why I deserve a queen. And he was like, no, you bugging. The the man is the prior. The man is. I'm like, yo, everything under man's control is fucked up. We still fighting wars. I I don't don't see no women really setting it on people like that. You feel me? Like, it's crazy. It's all under, the the world is messed up under men's control. So, of course, a man is going to make women believe that they're smarter. But women create life. And that's the closest thing to God I know. And I get a lot of pushback for that, but I don't care. That's just, that's, that, that's what's made my life the, what it is. Do you think you would, I mean, I agree 1000%. And I think that's why the world is in a deep imbalance because men have been tricked into believing that otherwise. Um, but it's not really hard to figure out if you're paying attention. Do you think that you would have, been that aware had you not taken this last like had this experience and been in the house every day raising your child no 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 never i I can't believe how much work it is to be a mom you know and that women do this on their own and that men don't have the strength to see it through where a woman just won't give up on their child so when you just say let your mother take care of it that's like saying i'm giving up on my child and then you're not visualizing what how much work like 
when 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 I think about Rocky doing certain things, I think about or even me, what it's going to look like in the future, carrying a baby while you going shopping or going to the doctor and what could happen and all these things. I just I I, I couldn't have pictured that it's that much work to take care of a baby. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually have to give my uh you know, my other kids uh moms kudos despite how I feel because they took that challenge on and they, they they did a lot without me you know I just I don't know why they chose that you know what I mean I was fighting to be there like that's the crazy shit is I'd be the one fighting to be there you know you gotta remember I had custody of Boogie when he was uh eight so I was a single father and I wouldn't do that to another child ever again it's affected him to this day do you think it's your lifestyle, the the rock star lifestyle that they like they don't understand or they don't they don't understand even like the idea that, you know, you would have other women in the house and also be married, essentially. And that's not the I'm just curious because like some I know you because you have children I, I didn't, people, I didn't they have I, different perspectives I, I didn't, on the, my first child. I was 20. So it was never really like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was married to Rachel. And again, I'm, I, I have so much respect for my children that I don't really get into that. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, they she just wasn't like, you know, I guess Rachel would like would like swing on girls in the club. <laughs> like jealousy. Just a girl just disrespect. Like a girl might just come up and kiss me and she'd be like, Ooh. and it'd be the <laughs> wackest punch in the world. You know what I mean? And I'd be like, You gotta stop doing that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's gonna whip your ass. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't even about and I and again, I would never what I've been used as an example of, which is even great, my daughters will probably never get with a man like me. You understand what I mean? They know what a man like me is, and I'm like, that's a choice. Would you want your daughters to date a man like you? No. Mm. I-, I want my daughter to date the man like she's dating. Mm. Like, he does everything, but he's not... <clears throat> he has, he, you know, and, and again, it's not... You have to understand the issues I have. You know, these are like, I think they warrant me sometimes being a little insecure. Um, my mother died, and that was my worst nightmare when I was like 15. And that, from that space on, I was very leery about letting myself get close to a woman. Mm. And then I get close to a woman, and she dies in a plane crash. Mm. So, of course, I'm like, I have a fear of being invested. And, and only, you know what I mean? It's like, I already know it. You know what I mean? So... And I think Rocky understands that, you know what I mean? But it's not like I'm, I'm not, in, don't get it twisted. I'm not in a bunch of relationships with a bunch of women at all. It's just, they be around, you know what I mean? I, they're around. They, yeah, we hang no, out, no, we no, kick it. But she just doesn't have any issues with it. You know what I mean? Where the women that I've been with before just, they just didn't want girls around me at all. But again, I wouldn't either. You know what I'm saying? But I think our relationship would be different if I wasn't around Raquel every single day. So if I was leaving her to be with other around women, that would be different. And but I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I have no desire to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like What's your sign, Damon? I forgot. Yeah. Taurus. Taurus. Oh, that makes total sense. Yeah. Your birthday just passed? Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Grounded. 50, the home life is really important. You like nice things. Mm. Um stability. Independence. Independence. Are you a creature of habit? Like, you do order the same shit over and over again? Do you go to the same places? Yeah, eat the same food. (laughs) I mean, I don't like to take chances, and I like to control my environment. Mm. So, like, Coachella, I can't control that environment. So, (laughs) give me a little anxiety, all those people. But I do like to be able to make my rules, you know, without them breaking any laws. Um, What I I think what I was going to say is, you know, I know you have a a son and a baby son. (laughs) A baby son. (laughs) Um, and obviously you share this, you share this perspective of, um, that women are gods and all these things. Like, I guess in what ways do you, are you going to raise him different than you were able to with your sons? Obviously I know they were there. I know, I know you're there, but is (laughs) there anything different different that you would change versus the lessons you taught your older sons versus, you know, now having a a much younger son? Well, the difference between my first son And the rest, it was like I had just made all that money as I had him. So it was like I didn't really know how. I was new money. 
And I had, he was outside. Him and my nephews was too cool. I wanted them to be as cool as me, but I, I, that's too cool. Because mm-hmm. that gets you in trouble. You know, you got to be, they was outside. So, like, you know, again, I had Boogie, but my, all my nephews, the heirs, Darian and little Darian, they call him uh, Dash now, little Stevie, um, little Bobby, and little Keefe, and even little Austin out here, Stacy's uh, son. Those little motherfuckers were all the same age, and they was bad. And, you know, what I would do is I would give them my cars I didn't really use, like my van, like I had the van custom before everybody, but once I got sick of it, I'd give it to them. And their nanny was basically a driver with a gun. And I would hear, now that they're older, I'd hear the stories, and I'm like, <sighs> and they all got in trouble, mm. or every last one of them. Mm. You know, they're all like, they're good now. But for my other nephews and my kids, especially my boys, I tried to keep a lot of that cool shit. I teach them the ideals. But I didn't want, they wasn't like, I don't have them running around. You know, I, I almost wanted to be a little corny. Mm-hmm. Just a touch. You know what I mean? Too cool means you've dealt with pain too much. Too cool to get you fucked up out here. Yeah. I, I have a question, speaking of pain. I know you talked about, um, you know, just understanding how you relate to women from your past experiences and some of your trauma from your mom and the relationship that you had. How have you, like, I, that's, first of all, bomb to be able to recognize exactly where it's inflicted and how it's affected you and your relationships but how have you worked on healing that like are you in therapy and yeah i did a lot of i still i do therapy every week but i'm I'm lucky enough to have like a friend that's a therapist so you know we got that show healing is gangster oh right but before that like when i'd have to get court ordered therapy like i had to go through like supervised visitations and therapy just to see my children but it really did help i'm glad i went through it so what i learned was when you're spending time with your child, like I had Ava and um, Boogie, they used to be in my world with me. So they'd come to the office, my office, and they'd come to my events. And I felt like that was me spending time with them. What I learned was I have to go to their office. Mm. So, you know, <clears throat> it became for Tallulah, <clears throat> Tallulah time. And we would make, you know, that we would make her environment. I would basically go to a seven, eight year old's environment and create that. So now if you go into baby Dusko's, it's it's an environment, it's his environment. We don't really try to bring him in our environment so often. That's why he doesn't come to the office. You know, we, uh, we create an environment of his that we hang out in. I'm so glad that you said that because I think that's something that a lot of parents miss, not just dads, moms too, but... Well, I had to get professional help to realize that. Hmm. I didn't just... That wasn't just something Because in your mind, you were like, I, what? I'm doing... I'm spending it's the time. Baby. They're well, at the show. They're well, seeing Janet Jackson in person. They're yeah. doing this. Like, what the fuck are they complaining about? What, what, what's crazy is how confident you could be in something that you're so wrong. Mm. And then when you figure out or find out or get enlightened or have that epiphany, it's your responsibility to change immediately. But some people don't, even though they're conscious, they go by pattern. But yeah, therapist, I needed that. Was that just one? Was that just one breakthrough? Like they just, she just broke it down like that, and you just understood it, or it took time for you to get to get I understood there. Understood it as soon as she said it. Because mm. I saw, you know, when I went to the therapy, it wasn't like us sitting in a, a therapist room. We were in like a, a nurse, you know, like a romper room type shit, places to play. Mm. So you know, so you just gotta have that environment where it's like a little amusement park for them and that's where you play with them. Mm. And like I said, it, it, also, um, you know, I've gotten with a crew called the OSG, with this, which is what this ring is, a part of the commission, but the OSG is a part of it. As Dennis McKeezy has created 120, over 120 black principals all over the country. I have a Tuesday class with them where I teach them entrepreneurship and on Thursdays, but they teach me as well. But on Thursdays, they just talk about issues and, you know, either the Board of Education has to deal with them or they deal with them. Mm. But I was lucky enough to be able to do it like uh, uh, Jocko, that's a principal, and uh, I call her uh, yeah, Jocko and Dr. Action. Um, they taught us a curriculum from the womb to three years old. So we were able to start working with baby Dusko while he was still in his stomach. Mm. So he came out recognizing voices and all this stuff. And we had reading. It was, we did a lot of things. 
So we have that like blueprint. And if we're doing something wrong, they tell us how to do it right. Mm. So like, you know, Jocko curated this uh, uh, baby group, mommy group of all these mothers that are professionals that have kids. And it's not competitive, but you just learn like, oh, your kids potty train? How? You know, it's the uh, whatever, you know, I forgot. It's like a tribe where you get to actually figure out and learn from people. Exchange knowledge. But you got to want it. So, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a wife that wants to know how to make uh, teaching the baby better. His toys, all everything is about learning. Mm -hmm. So I've also learned how to spend time, educational time, not just playing Uno, but actually things that stimulate, you know, and trigger uh, and also eliminate fear. Mm. you know it's about eliminating as much that's why he can swim he'll never be scared of water it's true because I mean this world that we live in now especially with the access that we have like it does nothing but put fear in you everywhere you go is like an opportunity for fear to penetrate children I swear to god well that's how you're controlled exactly and then creates anxiety yeah that's how you're controlled oh wow fear is what controls us could you imagine having no fear right I can't you know what's gonna happen is gonna happen you know, and sometimes you have to face some fucked up shit to know that you could deal with things. So I was like almost lucky, but unlucky enough to deal with some fucked up shit when I was young, like losing my moms and my girl and going through all this shit that I, when I know when there's a real problem, like a lot of people I find just overreact to things that aren't so bad. Mm. And just like, you know, y'all you know, was asking about my eye, I'm diabetic. I'm not going to panic when something that happens, the diabetic happens. I'm it's part of the game. I already know it. I'm just going to make sure I fix it. Mm-hmm. I'm just not going to be lazy about my health. Right. You know, and as a result, there are people that always would feel sorry for me having to stick a needle that are going through it now. And I'd rather have this than that any day. You know what I mean? So I always compare when I got the cards that have been dealt to me to others. And I'm like, shit, my hand is dope. If I complain, it would be disrespectful. You know, as long as nobody's dying and nobody's terminally ill and nobody's in jail and you can actually fix something that's not right, you can make something wrong right, it ain't a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm celebrating every day that there's no problems because there will be natural things that you can't control. So in between that time, why the fuck be upset? Save upset for when it's time to be upset. You know, hormones sometimes make people overreact. So you got to get a control and understand your hormones and when them shits are triggered and how they get triggered. And then you have to understand your safe words like sex. So when Rocky and I get into a place where we're too emotional, the word is avocados. Uh. Avocados means we don't don't even talk no more because we're so emotional that nothing we say is going to be productive. We're only going to hurt each other. So we we know our safe words. I know when I'm triggered. I'm like, oh, I'm triggered. Go to the other side of the house or I'll go to the other side of the house. You know what I mean? Just knowing your triggers and understanding how to isolate them. And then that's when you find your partner. But you can't expect to find anyone that ha- doesn't have the same imperfections that you do. Like you almost have to present the person you want to be with. Like you need to, you have to present yourself as the person that you want to be with? Right. So because Rocky takes good care of herself, you know, yeah. I want to be with her. You know what I mean? She's the person, she presents the person that I want to be with. Like, I want to be with that person because of how good she takes care of herself. I want to be taken care of that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I, I know that I'm going to take care of her as much as she takes care of me. That's the reason why we, we work out. Because the things that I can't do, she does so well. And the things that she can't do, I do very well. And there are times that I have to recognize and we have to recognize, like, yo, that's just not what you do. So if she got mad every time I, like, you know, threw my slippers around or, you know, threw some socks and didn't put shit, then we'd have a bad time. But, you know, I'm used to being able to pay people to do that, you know? And I still do it when I'm conscious, but, you know, or she, me even be able to fix certain things. Like, I'm not that dude. I'm not that manly guy in that way. But I know I'm going to go get the money. I'm going to protect the family. I'm going to make it to where you got anything and everything you want. I'm going to make all your dreams come true. I'm going to give you all the tools that you need to do what you do. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And make sure that you can raise a child without having to worry about anything. 
That's but, but again, sometimes I might be like, why you ain't, you know what I mean? I might, and I got to catch myself. It's not what you do. Hmm. You know, some people in relationships, some people know how to communicate and project and some people don't. And some people, no matter how much therapy they get, they will not know how to project what they feel. But if you understand that about a person, you can't sometimes be mad when they don't do that. You just have to figure out how to read them. I think also like you have that, that I think too takes, takes someone to remove ego because I think a lot of times for you to say it is like, that's just not what you do. Someone might be like, I do do that. I can do that. I, you know, and it's like accepting that, like my, what my, what my, what my powers are and what my weaknesses are. Well, pretending you're something you're not is going to get you jammed up when it comes time for that real action. So I ain't going to say I could do something that I can't. And then when it's time to do it, I can't do it. I'm going to look stupid. And then, <laughs> then I'm going to overcompensate. So I'm never going to pretend I'm better at something than I am. I'm just not. I think people, I respect that so much. I never heard of having a safe word just for an argument. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes sense. And I think it just requires also people get into relationships a lot of times hiding and running from their own shit because you're in love and it feels good and then I can focus on your shit and avoid my own. Well, let me tell you what happens. The difference between Rocky and I, we were friends first. Our intention wasn't to be in a relationship. Right. So some people present themselves to be better than they are to close the deal. And then once they close the deal, they'd be like, you, you acted like you had more money. <laughs> you acted like you were more loving. You know, you just acted like she was able to really see what I am and who I am, how I carry my family. You know, we weren't together day one. You know, we were around each other a couple of years before we got together. And then she was like, damn, she just loved the way I take care of my children. You know, she just loved the way I can be, you know, happy all the time, even when I'm upset. And then I'm a funny guy. She loves how I'm, I fight fearlessly. Like, no matter what, camera's on or not, that's who I am. I'm not presenting something. She knows who I am. So that's why I said she got to see what most people consider faults and learn to. And she was like, I actually enjoy how devilish she is. I love it. I want to see more of it. She loves it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, she loves it. I'm like jackpot. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just like, go make her uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know. Because she knew that pressure I used to put on her and how uncomfortable it made her. So she likes to see it on other people. Mm. Like, she likes to see me make girls hit their head and walk into glass walls and shit. <laughs> what? Yeah. Ask about it one day. <laughs> we surely will. The, the last time we were in the airport, I'll text her ask Nicolette. Where's Nicolette? They don't want to believe it, right? But the girl just fainted. You know, and I was like, yeah, I was looking at it. And shit, I saw her going. I told the thing. She about to faint. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I'm having an anxiety. And what it was was she had a mask on, but she was so well dressed. I was looking at her gear. Uh -huh. And I, Nicola, did the girl faint? Or no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She fainted. You know what I mean? And I was just, that was just from like, oh. I was like, it happens sometimes. If you ain't ready for my energy, it might. It makes you bump your head. <laughs> I got I could a series. See that. I could see that. No, you ask her. We have statistics. <laughs> like we'd you be in restaurants. I'd be like, I bet you that girl walks into the wall. Cause I see her looking at me. She walked right in the boom, walk right in the glass. Like, God damn it. <laughs> or girls. Hypnot you hypnotizing bitches out here? I honestly don't do it on purpose. <laughs> like I, I didn't my intention wasn't to make the girl faint. He's a witch, don't you know? He doesn't know it. I mean, he said he surrounds but himself. But they don't want to, she won't, they won't give me the, I'll be like, I, I just think these are coincidences, but. <laughs> Not coincidences. A well-dressed girl all of a sudden faints in front of me, you know. <laughs> and I saw it. Like, the girl, I saw her wobbling. And, you know, I, my man was with us that was helping us through. And I'm like, yo, could you get her? She's about to fall. And she was already on the floor by the time he got there. Well, I hope she's okay. She's okay. <laughs> Be careful who you stare at, Dame. Yeah. Come on. Let me not look at you. Don't look at me. That's why you have glasses on. Don't this look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me with those eyes. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know what we didn't do? We didn't share an affirmation. What do you what kind of affirmation love. do you have? For Everything our I do is for love. Everything I, I do, do is, for, is love. for love. That's my currency. Everything. Everything That's I how I rate my love. wealth, my bank account. How much love I got in it. Everything I do is for love. That's my currency. That's my currency. I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Everything I do is for love. If it's not for love, then it's not productive to my bank account, spiritual or otherwise. I don't need it. I don't want it. I think, I mean, I think that's true even with us. Like anything, this is like probably the, the biggest love I've ever had in my life. Ever. In my friendship, she's my Rocky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and also my in this business that we've created and... I've loved it so much. I did so much of it with for for nothing. Didn't get not for nothing, but like without getting paid. 
without, without like monetary, monetary gain. Yeah, gain. Yeah. yeah. You have to build a brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even like um, with fashion, you have to like, for Rachel's company, I had to sign on to a business plan to lose like $2 million a year for five years. You know what I mean? So you have to build your brand by being consistent. And, you know, people don't pay for it the first day because they don't know what the brand is. So you have to give it away. Even when you hustle, you sell drugs, you give out samples, you get them addicted. Not you sell, I've never heard of samples you, and drugs. Then, then you re, then you never sold drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. The way you You're open right up now. a block, the way, you open, the way you open up a block is you give out samples because they never had your work before. So they got, oh, that shit is good. Mm-hmm. And then once they want it, this is when you come out and you sell it to them. Mm-hmm. You know, even, even, with, even with fashion, you give out, T-shirts, Pieces, you give right. out your stuff, yeah. you give out samples. Once enough people have it, I'm just giving you it in every language. You know, yeah, the thing no, about learning right. is people learn in different languages. That's the reason why education has to change because it's in a language that triggers and intimidates sometimes our culture. Mm. You could t- tell someone the same exact thing in a, in a different way and it makes them comfortable. You, the same exact thing you tell them in a different language or a different verbiage, that addiction, it'll give them anxiety and it'll shut them down. So even with the NFTs and everything else, business contracts they're in languages that make you say i'm not reading it no more Mm. but if you really look at what it says it's relatively simple you don't even need those middlemen to actually do those things so when things are presented in a complicated way it's so that you pay somebody to uh you know translate it it, yeah that's it so i just find that i have to go and look at what it really is like i don't care what you're saying let me just see what it logically breaks down to Mm. and then figure out how to communicate it to the people i love in the way that they can apply it very easy without them feeling anxiety. So that's the reason for having my own television network, making our own education curriculums, making our own books, making our own everything. Because most of the things, like even laws, you know, like I think the head of the Senate in like 1950 or 40, whatever, was like, you know, the head of the KKK was the Grand Dragon. So that means all the laws that were passed from this period of time were made to not, not to behoove us, but to oppress. Yeah. You know, so every law that was made by either someone that had a slave or someone that was very racist, that could, they could get canceled in this day, all those laws need to be done over. Mm, right. So, you know, we need to learn how to pass laws, how to lobby, and how to do things the way we want it done as opposed to asking people to give it to us. Right. So that's why we make well, a curriculum. they're never going to give it to us. And I don't expect them to. I don't want yeah. my oppressor to give me a damn thing. Just period. I want, I'm going to do it. So I think you, you, your relationship is y'all give each other freedom. You know, you give you guys are confident about expressing who maybe you've not been expressing who you've been for years. Like I haven't seen this kind of confidence in a while. You know, I feel like y'all give each other confidence. I think that's I think that's an accurate description. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Untraditional or not, y'all feel good. I think. Well, yeah, I think whether yeah whether it's love or work or friendship, freedom is kind of that's, freedom is everything. That's where that's where everything begins that's how you can feel safe that's how you can work in love and being unapologetic about who you are yeah. is everything because then no one can judge you when you're worried about being judged then you're judged if you don't give a fuck then it doesn't matter what anybody thinks and that's my thing i i learned at a young age how to shh, i got this i don't give a fuck repelling on that people just don't understand because i know whatever i'm fighting for is my truth and i don't mean to hurt anybody i just mean to feel good mm. Be- being in being worried about how someone feels about you is living in fear. You're never going to satisfy or be accepted by everyone. That's basically the most of the world. And if you're living in fear, you're not here to do whatever you're meant to be here to do. You're not going to fulfill your purpose living in fear of disappointing someone else. You're right. As long as you're like living in love, you know what I'm what I'm doing is to better you know, like it's in love. I'm not worried about if you like it, if, if, if it satisfies you, if I'm saying it correctly, if I offended you, fuck you. You know, it's not the message well, is not well, for what you. What's obvious is somebody made y'all very unhappy and you're celebrating being happy. Right. That's what it seems like. And I'm, I'm, love, I'm loving that you're so happy and free. Yeah, I am. I'm very happy and free. I'm happy to be in company. When, when, when you've been oppressed on any level, freedom on any level feels so good. And you got to celebrate it. That's why I said I'm celebrating today about how sad I was about losing the baby a year and a half mm-hmm. or two years ago. I know how unhappy I was, so I got to be double happy now. Right. Because I made a dream come true, and I have to celebrate that I'm living in it. 
So you guys are like celebrating your dream and you're actually loving it so much that you're monetizing it. So you figured it out. You just got to be patient. That's all. Be patient with your love. Because if you love something, I'm, I'm going to wrap it. If you love something, it don't feel like work. So, you know, I got to go do an interview with my daughter. I know. Oh, and I love that. I know. I'm so, uh, I can't wait till we do that. We're going to just read your, you pulled a tarot card. I'm going to read what it means real quick. And then we will end this. Um, thank you so much. Okay, so you got King of Pentacles, and it's a King of something. Well, I, well, you're King, and Pentacles is usually the mon mm. like money, is gifts, it's tangible things, it's wealth, business, leadership, security, discipline, and abundance. And I think you represent that very much. But uh, the King of Pentacles represents material wealth, financial abundance, and worldly success. This king is a faithful provider. He uses his ambition and confidence to create wealth for himself and others and generates his self worth from what he has accumulated and can share with others. He is also a fatherly figure who provides <laughs> others with advice guidance and wisdom especially in financial and work related matters wow when the king of panda what it <laughs> when the I king of pentacles you should appears they're gonna say i'm down with the funky shit oh know. my goodness i thought you say you don't care what they say pause I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one see you've been dang dashing me all day uh, well you <laughs> know she's quick wow i like that mm. Um, you're confident. That's like my successful. daughter. She does the same. Like she, you know, she damned. It's like I taught her too much. <laughs> she uses it on me like that. It's crazy. You, I didn't you, teach you're you that. You're used to that wittiness, huh? Um, successful and attracted to managing wealth. Not only do you identify opportunities for growth and success, but you also draw upon your self-discipline and control to manage your wealth and invest it wisely for the long term. It indicates you can translate your vision into something tangible, practical, and often very lucrative. You're the ultimate business owner, Damon Dash. Did y'all fix that or something? No. no. I just fixed that. You picked that. No. that you sure there's more cards there but that one? <laughs> I sure told really? you. I literally you said, we always ask a guest to pick a card. You did. At the end, you got me on that. Of, it always relates to whatever we talked about or who that person is, is or going through. And well, that is, this is your card, sir. It is. You might need to get that tattooed. Yeah. Thank you for entering uh, the Good Mom's Den. I love the Good Mom's Den. Thank you for entering our universe, our witchy universe. We appreciate your advice and your words. And I'm about to use a safe word in my relationship. I know. I can't wait to get in a relationship and have a safe word. <laughs> Avocado, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Avocado. Tempura. <laughs> it, it has to be something random. <laughs> Because it makes you be like, what? what? Okay, okay. <laughs> it almost kind of makes you maybe have to laugh, too, if you're in well, that moment, you know? But yeah, because then you'd be like... You're like, this lady, like, what the off. fuck are we talking about? All you right. got to be like, oh, shit, I'm the uncool one. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm usually the one that calls avocados. Like, avocados. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell the people where they can find you, Dame. Uh, you know, my Instagram is Dusko Poppington. Um, I guess right now you can go to poppingtonfortheclothes.com. Um, Dame Dash Studios, but I'm in phase three of uh, my technology, so I'm gonna relaunch that. But everyone that has a subscription is still on. Um, the 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 Dash uh, NFT gallery, so we have a uh, you know a uh, a gallery in the metaverse. Oh wow! Okay. And you know they're building it on Network, but you could go to it now. So that's uh. Uh, dash NFT art with at dash NFT gallery .io, and you could check that out. What our gallery looks like, the metaverse. We got a bunch of movies coming out in Love for a Living, uh, The Prince of Detroit, uh, this movie Therapy, and uh, yeah, we, we we working. I love that. You're Rocky Rocky got her her uh, Miss Butterbean, and her book. She she has those two books. Uh, Dusko Goes to Space in the coloring book and they're now working back there on uh, on uh, Dusko Goes to Sea mm. and the coloring book and the cookbook coloring book and then also I have a comic book Dead Weight and a movie coming I gotta shoot the movie but the comic the first issue of the comic book is done so we working just being creative and then we got records you know Nicolette got a record out I got the Black Guns so you can go to therapy by the Black Guns right now and um, yeah can we use a Black Gun song to outro this? You episode? can use a Black Gun song anytime you want. Like, whoop, whoop. I'll give you you all hear that, Apple? Anytime you want. We have permission. Don't come for us. This is permission. I will give you permission to use my whole catalog. Well, Perfect. you know, well, you guys know where to find us at Good Moms underscore Bad Choices on Instagram. 
Y'all, we're about to go to Costa Rica next month. It's coming up. We're almost sold out. Make sure you go click the link in this episode description to find out everything that's happening at our retreat in the jungle, in Puerto Viejo, women's retreat, witchy shit, healing shit, fun shit, hood rush it with your friend shit. shit, find friends, find yourself July 31st and August 10th. There are two dates. It's a week long. And bitch, you need a break. This is your fucking sign. You need a break. Yes. Um, and if you love this episode, go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. We love you, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Later. Later.